half of uh, the faculty members are the senior professors. Others are the associate professors. Some are assistant professors, but they are still very uh, capable and competent scholars, researchers. So uh, I'm not going to uh, tell you under this topic, very uh, detailed science or uh, something which is very much uh, unique. So I will simply uh, try to uh, sensitize the audience here and give an overview of the subject, why Mountain? So why we have chosen uh, this the core subject of the summer school uh, that is mountains. So I will speak why mountains matter. So instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, giving a lot of dose of the uh, science, technology, or uh, other factors related to the mountains. I will like to share my experiences, how I emerged with the experience of the mountains and how this experience has inculcated into uh, my functioning, professional functioning, uh, all, all across my professional career from the beginning to till the end, I mean, till the day. So I have almost passed 30 years <clears throat> in the field. So this experience uh, has taught me a lot. And then there is a manifestation into uh, the articulations on the subject of the natural resource management, which I bring uh, as, as an expertise <clears throat> from, from a long time. So uh, let me uh, share that I, my first exposure was uh, in 1990 when I had first visited Nainital districts in India, which, is, which was that time uh, in Uttar Pradesh province. <clears throat> now it has become Uttarakhand since year 2000. So uh, my first exposure was uh, in Nainital because I was studying my master's in environmental science in a nearby area that is a very popular university called G.B. Pant University of Agriculture and Technology. So we had a, uh, an exposure, uh, class exposure, rather class exposure, and I had the exposure to the mountain. So I have understood that this topography and geography is something different. The people seemed very different from the plain areas because I was born in the plains, Gangetic plain, uh, very close to Delhi. <clears throat> so I had uh, started a different kind of exposure and gradually when I completed my masters, then my first, uh, first job and my first uh, employment was in Dehradun again, uh, that was in Uttar Pradesh, but in the foothills of uh, Himalayas. It's very much Himalaya right now, uh, <clears throat> which is the capital city of Uttarakhand state. So then the career started and uh, you will be surprised that my first uh, uh, assignment was to design a watershed project in Tehri Garhwal district. So I, uh, got tremendous exposure with the mountain geography and topography. So I had to learn the uh, how the soil uh, and water conservation uh, is to be done by the experts as an expert. But that time I was not expert really. So I had, uh, I was in the learning process. So I learned uh, from various scientists based in Dehradun so I got an exposure to the soil and water conservation techniques. I read a lot about it. Then I had also designed the, uh, the, the implementation project. And that project was supported by G.B. Pant Institute uh, of Himalayan Environment and Development. 
that uh, uh, so this way i got the exposure to the mountains and then there is a long history of working in the mountains thereafter in 96 i shifted to himachal pradesh where the great himal very famous great himalayan national park is existing which is right now the unesco world uh, world heritage site <clears throat> And thereafter, uh, after a certain gap, like um, and from uh, like uh, nine or eight years, so uh, I had uh, a chance to set up an office there within the periphery of the Great Himalayan National Park. And 2005, this institute was creating right there. So I have uh, uh, just consumed this time for explaining this, that how this institute emerged in the mountains. So this idea, so the very genesis of the institute is having inherently the mountain background. So that is how the summer school uh, was started um, right in 2007 and 2008. We had tried in 2010 as well. Uh, and this is uh, the third school which we are doing now online. So this school, when we set up in Canada, this institute in 2018, so we decided in 2019 that we will do this summer school at the global scale. So we got, uh, we mobilized the partners, we wrote the partner to the part, very various potential partners and some of them agreed to do this and wonderfully, uh, I mean, after long efforts, so we are here. So let me uh, now proceed with this background, um, saying that the mountain environments cover 27% of the world's land surface. So this data has already been provided by the mountain partnership, uh, Rosalina yesterday in the uh, inaugural session. So uh, she has given very, very nice uh, statistics because mountain partnership is a uh, global network working under the FAO. So they are uh, really the uh, very, very updated institution and very authoritative institution for the subject along with the EC mod. <clears throat> So uh, we see that mountains have a very large expansion all over the world. And I think half of the world's countries, although here is written that 22% of the world's people live in the mountains, but I think uh, these mountains are some type of the mountain or other type of the mountains are existing in half of the world. Uh, so with this, we see that the ecosystems and the watersheds of the mountains, they are really uh, the bread and butter for not, not only for the local inhabitants, but also the, uh, the plain areas, I mean, where the uh, rivers flow into, uh, I mean, they originate from the mountains and then they flow down to the <clears throat> sea coasts, so across the plains. So these uh, mountains are uh, feeding large populations. And we see the mountains are also, uh, you know, the stabilizer of the climates, microclimates, not only the microclimates. So these are the, uh, these are not the new things for all of us. These are very old things and, and written in so many, so much literature. <clears throat> I should uh, uh, share here very good, uh, uh, I mean, example of how the mountains and the natural resources therein, how the natural ecosystems, pristine and fragile ecosystems of the mountains they support the livelihoods <clears throat> of the local people and how those livelihoods are different from the others. That is very important to understand. In my personal observation and my personal experience, I can quote here the example of Himachal Pradesh, the state, one uh, Himalayan state of India, where <clears throat> 
when i compared the people the himachal people with the other states people then i found a very stark uh, difference between these two different types set of the populations so when we compare the himachal families they are by nature they are very cool they are rarely aggressive number 1 number 2 they are uh, having not much ambitions not many ambitions they are very very satisfied like today in the western world and in also fast industrial uh, industrial societies we see that the people are you know earning lot of money lot of material they have lot of resources but they have no peace they are searching for spirituality they are looking for that and they are spending money also on that to seek it they want to go for tourism into the mountains into other areas the coastal areas but they are still not finding any peace anywhere but my observation i saw a family having the 11 girls daughters 11 daughters i have seen literally and stayed with this family overnight so i experienced this family having 11 daughters in a, in, in this family and the person is sleeping a very sound sleep i mean not a trace of anxiety on the face i tried to discover what's the reason behind this they said they explained first of all our society is natural resource society and we have a plenty of resources and food everything we have around us so we have no no nothing no greed nothing uh, to uh, excavate so much resources and you know uh, whatever we need we we got it around from us our land our our nearby forest and the other mountain um, mountain land so we go there and we whatever we want to eat or we want to get even the medicines are available so everything is here around us and this is free except our agriculture so whatever even agriculture is not very advanced but we have plenty of land and we grow enough to eat over the years for over the year so our family doesn't need anything more and we are not uh, we have no unrest we are very satisfied we are leading a very satisfied life number 1 number 2 uh as in the uh, other societies of this country there is a uh, dowry system for the daughters so that's in in our image in our local society we have no such system even the boys come to marry with the girls and they offer that i want to marry with this girl and the the father is even uh, even the boy has to give the security money in the bank of the girl daughter so there is no system of dowry you know that the uh, father of the daughter has to give a lot of material to the boy so this is not a system so that's why i have the 11 girls and i am sleeping very nicely so largely uh this uh, society in the mountains largely i mean uh is very satisfied with the resources they have around them and they augment their livelihood very peacefully and by nature also by behavior they are very cool and they are very uh, not at all aggressive in some cases like the district una which is bordering the punjab very uh, developed state of the industrial state of the punjab so that uh, district has some uh, distinct culture and distinct system from the other districts of the himachal pradesh but largely the himachal pradesh uh, mainland is very cool what i have described to you so so this is the effect of the natural resource system which we call the also called the biosphere uh, system biosphere system so in this uh, the mountain ecosystems have a very critical role this way now there are the problems 
of late, there are the problems. Because of the influence of the market, because of the influence of the uh, mainstream society, I mean, the society, the people living in the plain areas and people living in the industrial zones, they come to Himachal Pradesh, they buy the properties, they, they establish their businesses. They also come, mainly come for the tourism. So there is a lot of market influence in the Himachal society as well. But I think there is no, uh, as such, uh, fundamental shift per se. So here uh, uh, we have to learn that how uh, the various resources, not only uh, the, I mean, the forest, the uh, diversity, the animals, the wildlife, the agriculture, even agriculture is very rich. We have done a very wonderful project in, uh, in, the, in about 50 villages of Great Himalayan National Park where we documented the agricultural gene pool. So we had documented about 32 very traditional varieties of different crops, 12 or 14 different crops. And we uh, documented this and then published also. Uh, it is also on our website of the Grassroots Institute, you can find. So uh, this gene pool is really different. The crops which are not found right in other parts of the country, they were being grown by uh, the traditional people and traditional communities in that interior areas. So uh, this is how the mountains are different and we have to perceive the mountains and mountain ecosystems different. Now, lastly, I should uh, uh, give a little glimpse on the uh, problems created by the industrialization. Mountains are not uh, at all um, untouched by the problems. And these problems are really created by the uh, industrial society as such and the, with the nexus of the political system and industries. So industries, because, because wherever there are the natural resources, the industries want to uh, extract those resources for their benefits. Although they, 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 they uh, articulate that this, they are producing some material for the larger society, but the major motive is to, to um, gain the benefits and there's their own, you know, their own, I mean, they want to benefit from that, those uh, resources. So here, uh, the mountains, uh, uh, mountains have a major problem. Number one is the mining. Mining is a very old and classical thing, which is happening all across the mountains. We see the Himalayas, we see the Central Asian mountains, for example, Pamirs or other, other mountains. So uh, the extraction of the resources in the form of the minerals, in the form of uh, other resources, even the timber extraction is a major, uh, <clears throat> major item, which, is, uh, which has a very uh, negative fallout. Uh, I have seen, literally, uh, I have seen in the Carpathian mountains myself, particularly in Ukraine, where the timber extraction is a major issue, major problem. And uh, uh, I have seen the, even the railway are, rail, rail is carrying the big, big logs, timber logs to the neighboring country, for example, Poland or uh, Hungary. So lately I have uh, read one very wonderful reports about the Carpathian uh, timber extraction by an Austrian company. Not only one company, but there are several companies these days and they have established uh, on the borders of the uh, Ukraine, Romania. So uh, from there, uh, a huge areas are uh, extracted and much of it is illegal. So anyway, another uh, important thing is the uh, hydropower projects we see 
that uh, for for like hundreds of the year, hundred years, maybe more than hundred years, <clears throat> hydropower development is taking place in the mountains, and the huge areas have been submerged by these hydropower projects. So this is another uh, important negative. Uh, activity, which is extractive, rather I should say extractive activity taking place in the mountains. So this way, uh, we see that the mountains are also suffering from these development projects, extractive industries. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a massive exploitation. Today, uh, the new thing, new uh, dimension has emerged that is of the tourism. So every government, wherever the mountains are there, they are really uh, very des desperate for earning the profits, earning the revenues. Uh, and, and that revenue easily comes from the uh, tourism industry. But there is a uh, tremendous implications of uh, especially the negative effect of this tourism. Even the eco people are uh, promoting the ecotourism, but ecotourism is still not has established uh, the conservation of the resources. The tourism, ecotourism is also is still doubtful uh, and under the scanner. <clears throat> Many experts have been um, have been in, uh, assessing the impacts of the tourism and mostly we, they found that there is a negative effect of the tourism activities. So uh, these are the things and these are the issues which are really troubling the mountains and because it is, if we see pragmatically that it is like uh, like a person having 20 hands and is uh, producing the eggs and he's uh, not only eating the eggs and earning the uh, money out of the eggs uh, so but he out of this he is uh, uh, you know making livelihood out of it but suddenly uh, he started you know <clears throat> He started slaughtering the um, hands one by one, and then uh, one day all hands finish. So this uh, mountain is having the similar fate. The go industries, governments, and uh, um, the vested interest people, they want to acquire more and more resources. They want to extract the resources from the mountains because the mountains are the repositories of these resources. And so they have uh, intention to extract more and more. And this way, the, the day is not very far when the mountains will finish. And once the ecosystem of the mountain finishes or it, it degrades considerably, the entire cycle of the uh, natural resources, this stops. For example, the water cycle. Water cycle is completely dependent on the green cover, the forests, the, the, <clears throat> the flora, and the soil composition, minerals. So if uh, uh, somebody extracts, somebody uh, excavates the soil or the, uh, the rocks and mines, and cuts the trees, so everything becomes, uh, I mean, the, all the resources go, and the water is not uh, retained by the, by the soil. So look, although the, uh, the mountainous soils, because of the uh, high relief or because of high slope, the water does, is not very readily uh, retained by the soil. So uh, in nutshell, we see, in, in, in many areas, we see that uh, despite of heavy rainfall in the mountain areas, the mountain do not have the en enough water. Enough water for the irrigation, enough water for the drinking. The people are, even the, in the mountains are facing the drink, drinking water shortage, irrigation water shortage. So this is happening because although there is, uh, there is a lot of rain happening there, but uh, this is the phenomena because the vegetation cover is reduced. 
and once the vegetation cover is reduced the water is not caught and it is not re retained by the uh, by the soil surface and entire uh, rain water is running off into the streams and then into the uh, tributaries of the rivers and then goes into the rivers so this way if the destruction goes on unabated so slowly uh, everything will finish and the all hands will be eaten by the uh, owner himself so we the humans are the owners of these mountains and then we are going to eat entire uh, resources of the mountains and then day is not far when we will finish everything and lastly uh, we will not have enough water we will not we will be suffering from the floods and everything all these uh, you know natural calamities and droughts floods etc so this is just a conclusion of my uh, uh, intervention today uh, here i have not uh, talked about the traditional local knowledge and the uh, livestock so but there are the other speakers and other other uh, esteemed faculty members who will speak a lot about it there are specific sessions in context of the mountains even in context of the livestock we have one full day about it so thank you so much i have of uh, i have consumed six minutes more i think yeah okay sir thank you yeah. very much yeah. but I, I started thank seven minutes late sir. yeah yeah. Yeah. you still have three minutes you still okay. have three minutes but, okay. but i will take i will take those three minutes <laughs> okay thank you sir thank you thank, thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, yeah uh, one minute i just switch off this uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much dr hasrat arjumand founding president of uh, this uh, the grassroots institute canada he started from India itself, from my state, Himachal. As he said that he has tremendous experience. We started from uh, this uh, watershed management and he traveled a lot in mountainous areas, starting from Himalayas, Himachal Himalayas. And finally, he settled at uh, Canada with this uh, initiation of this grassroots institute uh, in 2018. For, uh, according to him, mountain environment covers more than about 27% of globe land and uh, directly affecting 22, more than 22% of world population, which is really does matter here. That's why he said, why mountain matters. Mountains are the blend of, uh, it means uh, bread and water for uh, its people. It's a really very good statement which he has passed on the basis of his vast experience he's having. And uh, I really appreciate his experience in Himachal, being a Himachali. I'm really grateful to him that he, uh, he said that people from Himachal, they're very, very peaceful, they're very honest, as well as they're very cool people, and they're very hard worker. The story he told of seven sisters, seven daughters rather of a father. And that father is sleeping totally in cool and calm manner, you know, it's really salute worthy. And the way he narrated the system, which is known as matriarchal system, which is there in, in our Himachal, uh, in, some, in some areas of Himachal, not everywhere in Himachal. Then uh, he also pointed out some uh, major challenges which are being faced by the mountain in form of uh, uh, this uh, nexus, nexus of elite as well as the capitalist who are targeting the rich resources of mountains, uh, a particular the mining, mining particular the timber extraction and uh, this hydropower tourism cement industry as well, and unsustained agriculture. So let me, let me share with you all, all the delegates and all the participants that Himachal Pradesh has banned green felling. So 
uh, you cannot you cannot target any green tree for for uh, for this timber extraction and finally he asserted that need of the r is just to just to work as uh, just to work as, in collective manner and uh, just to rethink rethink and start working in more sustainable manner without it is too late or without further delay thank you sir thank you very much for your interventions and thank you very much for your presentation as well now it is time to uh,